Oh, oh boy, Josh Pate, man. <laughs> he said the reconstruction of the ACC is imminent. And yeah, I yep. have to agree with him. So this is what he said. Yep. Yeah, I think yep. the ACC is kind of sort of screwed. I think the future of the conference will look radically different than it does now. There are powerful enti- entities that are well motivated and, we- and well financially backed that want out. In other words, FSU. And they're not alone. <laughs> and I think they're going to get out. Now, I like this statement for a couple of different reasons, but I'm going to go ahead and flip it on the other side for you guys because I, th- I was thinking real deep about this. He was in deep medicine. Just on the surface level, yes, he's, he's, he's right. But let's go to what, what actually happened. So there was a bunch of conference realignments that happened. Everybody knows the whole deal. With the conference realignments and the way that the Pac-12 just died. They're not. They're, yeah, they're dead now. <laughs> SMU. Cal and Stanford came over to ACC, which absolutely makes no sense. And it's, I think it's just bad for the ACC in general. It's mm-hmm. gonna, I think we're going to have some weird football that's going to happen. That's a division to look out for, right? If Clemson or FSU leaves, the ACC is screwed. Let me repeat. Yes. If Clemson or FSU leaves, ACC is screwed. And Miami is going to surely follow just because of the, doesn't matter if they've never won the ACC before, blah, 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 just the, the brand of Miami is different. Mac Brown, we understand in a lot of different regards that this dude is a legendary coach, coach of Texas, came over to, to UNC. But to be honest, Mac Brown's not going to be able to, to sustain and give the firepower to the ACC like everybody thinks he can. Drake May was his lease on life. I don't know if he's ever going to find another Drake May type of talent, but we'll see. I mean, over the years, he's been a coach for a long time, and the best quarterback that he's ever coached, maybe Colt McCoy, but it's definitely in a lot of people's minds, Vince Young. And that was many moons ago. So here's kind of my theory. For the ACC to sustain in any given, at, at any given point, um, Grayson McCall at NC State, has to knock it out the park this year. And NC State is a is a great team. They've been doing really, really well. They've always had a really good team. And then we talked about this guy a couple, you know, a couple weeks ago, Kyron Drones from Virginia Tech. They need to carry the ACC this year. Because if Clemson FSU does not do well, it will make their move to another conference much harder. If those teams step up and are competitive with Clemson and FSU, it's going to make financially and it's not going to make the the teams look as good to move on to somewhere else because they're not going to be appealing. You know who's going to be appealing? NC State and Virginia Tech. <laughs> mm-hmm. So in order for the ACC to sustain those teams, those teams don't need to do well, and these other teams need to step up that do have a market that are, that are improving. Like Virginia Tech has a really big fan base. They just haven't done oh, yeah. well. And now they're on the up and up. NC right. State has always been known to be like kind of like a giant killer. UNC basketball school, Syracuse basketball school, cool. Virginia sucks, Georgia Tech sucks. Mm-hmm. Like, so you're gonna need these two teams to step up. But you could throw Miami in there now. Like, this is do or die for them with with, with Cam yep. Ward and all the transfers that they got in. Like Mario Cristobal coming over from Oregon. NC State, Virginia Tech, and I'll throw Miami in there. They need to carry the ACC this year, and Clemson and FSU, they can't do well, and that will make everything much harder for them to move out to another conference because what conference is going to want the two crappy teams that, that were has-beens? I mean, maybe the- I, would, I would hate to say that. I hate, I hate to say it like that, but that's just how I see You know, just kind of throw, like, my uh, multiversal – thread in there like loki this is yeah. this is what would need to happen according to what you know josh paid is saying and then you you know i don't know if you're going to see a radical change this year but it'll it'll eventually happen but that'll make it more complicated and conversations with us it'll make it even more interesting uh you know week to week but hayden what you think yeah and with the acc too like you mentioned style oh i just combined cal and stanford Anyways, <laughs> Sanford and Cal and SMU all joining the conference is it, it, it looks so weird because you're going to be having teams from like Syracuse up in New York going all the way out to SoCal, like California out there, and then 
to go to SMU as well. It's like the travel distance is there. And that move, that move of Stanford and Cal showed me that they were preparing for the worst with Florida State and Clemson. Because mm-hmm. they want to try and get the California market because it's they want to reach a whole nother group of people all the way out in the West Coast. You want to try and get that. And the California market already was the good teams, basically, with the prestige was taken up by the Big Ten in UCLA and USC. So they're just trying to grab what they can in the whole mess of what's go- what happened with the Big 12. And they just grabbed what they could in that, it seemed like, because they're, they know that as long as Florida State and, F- and Clemson, if they're the two teams in the championship, they're gone. Like you mentioned, they are. And the only way it changes is if FSU has a collapse and Clemson has a very okay year. Only way I don't see those two leaving, and like you mentioned with Miami, they're going to want to leave because, and they're going to want to try to go wherever FSU goes. And odds are FSU is going to go to the SEC because you'll give the SEC the Florida FSU rivalry, the FSU Miami rivalry, and the Florida Miami rivalry. All all three of the Florida teams, like big teams in Florida, besides UCF, the rivals there. That's going to be good money and good marketing for the SEC. And the ACC is fearing that right now because they know if FSU goes, Miami's going to start following suit. I feel like Miami right now is just waiting to see what happens right now because they know no matter how good they are or how bad they are, they can get out because of their name and the image and likeness that team has. Yeah, Don, close this out, man, on the Josh Pate stuff. Yeah, that was kind of interesting when I saw this. And um, with all the conference realignment and everything that's been going on, I'm thinking, okay, is this guy just coming up with this and like, duh, let's pick a conference. I'm going to grab a headline and say this is imminent. I want to see his sources. And when I dug into it and, and got his quote, what I found interesting was when he said he has acquaintances that have contacts in the legal community, not contacts he would normally have. And it came out with these contacts in a very interesting way. He said they're on the legal side of this and not necessarily the football side. Mm. And he's gotten as much intel as they can give him so far earlier in the week. And they basically said, hey, get ready. It's coming. Yeah, I mean, we've been we've been going through this for for a very long time now. It seems like they've been talking about this for three years. I know the grant of rights is in place, and they've they've been yep. trying to get out of there. And then you've had the even the ACC and a lot of different states try to represent. Well, the state of Florida, I believe, was trying to represent Florida State, and everybody's trying to find a loophole to get out of this thing. Yep. And mm-hmm. at, at the end of the day, it all comes down to money. The colleges. Colleges bring their own money in from sports, but ultimately get taxed by the <laughs> by the states and blah, 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 blah. We know how this wormhole actually begins. And then the television uh, rights try to get, try to get involved. Conference realignment <clears throat> just makes this even more complicated. And when it's not competitive and the teams are not winning, then you miss out on money right there, too. So yep. it's a nasty little circle that we're dealing in. It but, is. You know, Josh Payton knows <laughs> a lot of people, man. I he mean, does. a lot of people. A lot of people don't like him, but I mean, Josh is straight to the point. He don't care about your feelings. He cares about the the game of football at the at the end of the day. So, mm-hmm. but I'll he, say, I'm sure, when when it comes to sports, there are a lot of different people that try to try to get involved, and I'm sure he's got, like he said, he's got those relationships outside of. Yep. Too. I'll say this too about this one thing. Notre Dame's just looking on this and just kicking their feet up, eating the popcorn. They're that one mean. Just like, not really. The, well, not really hating because all the other sports are involved in the ACC. They are, but here's the thing. The football program's the biggest one. That's what they it, care about there the most. Uh, it, well, I mean, it still don't matter. It's still, it's still going to affect Notre Dame at the end of the day. It will, but let's be honest. It's probably a small percentage compared to what they get from the football program from NBC. 
Mm, what's the biggest sport, Don, in Notre Dame outside of football, do you think? <laughs> I bet you it's... It, right now, I, I think basketball has a slight edge over uh, lacrosse. And when you think of Notre Dame, besides football, what sports do you think of? It ain't basketball. I, I mean, I, I'd agree with that, Don. I, I know I know lacrosse is not bringing in the money it used to. No. Or not not that it used to, but that, that it's doing with other sports. And Notre Dame has always been decent, but they haven't been as good. As as they've been, because they just won the national. Yeah, they just won this year. I haven't paid attention to lacrosse yeah. this year at all. Yeah, um, yeah, because um, Tyler, uh, Tyler, what's his name? They used to play quarterback at Notre yeah. Dame. Oh, oh, yeah. Tyler Buckner plays for Notre Dame, and then the wide receiver plays for the. <laughs> Play, you know, he plays for the football. Team. That's why they're so good. They got the, they, they're very much in condition because of the football team. Yeah. 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 It's definitely, I mean, it's definitely football, but it, it is. I don't know about this Catholic school, though. So it is what it is. And plus, it, <laughs> they're, they're the Catholic school. They get other investments too. So I don't think what's happening here is really concerning. Isn't like the Vatican involved with that? Hold on, we can just a whole different... <laughs> we can just go in a hole, like, hole in this. <laughs> we can make a whole show dedicated to Notre Dame. <laughs> yep.